Uh, good afternoon, all, and thank you uh, for your kind words. And first of all, I should thank the organizing committee of uh, Diabetes India 2023 for hosting such a massive conference in our city, Indore, and which is the cleanest city, as you all know, and you have seen in the last few days for the six times in a row and preparing for the seventh one. And uh, uh, thank you the, uh, for the organizing committee for giving me this chance to speak after such big stalwarts of diabetic food, Dr. Manisha, Dr. Goyal, Dr. Das, and Dr. Thangavelu. And my talk is uh, on ideal diabetic footwear. So we have seen surgical management, we have seen uh, medical management, but this part of treatment of diabetic foot is often underutilized. And uh, I will start with a few quotes of wisdom from our mentor teacher, Dr. Sharat Pense that out of foot, out of shape footwear means an out of shape foot. And if the footwear is loose, it has little use. So these are the words from our uh, uh, mentor, Dr. Sharat Pense. And few studies to quote that inappropriate footwear is a major cause of foot ulceration. This is our Indian study from Prem Kumar et al. in National Medical Journal of India. There are so many studies, I'm quoting just one, that faulty straps, penetration of sharp objects through weak and soft outsoles, and not using proper soft insoles will lead to major ulcerations. And secondly, I'm quoting another study which says that use of therapeutic footwear significantly reduces the risk of re-ulceration as compared to conventional footwear. And this was a data of eight RCTs of more than 1,600 patients published in Journal of Diabetes Research, September 2022. There are many such studies which emphasize the use of therapeutic footwear and the ulcerations caused by inappropriate footwear. So basically, footwear can be categorized into two parts, that is preventive footwear and therapeutic footwear. Therapeutic footwear is used for offloading. Preventive footwear is to prevent and protect the uh, foot from getting injured. Majority of diabetic patients do not need special footwear. They should wear comfortable footwear like sports shoes, formal leather shoes or sandals. Preventive footwear is essential for only those diabetic patients who have loss of protective sensation and deformities. Offloading footwear, that is the therapeutic footwear, we have standard modalities like TCC, walking cast, slabs, surgical offloading, but footwear can also be considered as an alternative to these methods for offloading. So why the foot's feet get injured? Because the soft tissue of the foot is exposed to excessive forces. And what are these forces? The shear force, the compressive force, frictional force and the tensile force. When these forces are applied in excess to the foot, the soft tissue of the foot gets injured. Secondly, the magnitude of the foot, the force is applied, direction, velocity, duration, all these applied in excess to the foot will again lead to damage. So how does the offloading work? Offloading is one of the most important interventions to facilitate the healing of foot ulcers. It reduces these shear forces which I have mentioned and the pressure at the site of the ulceration. It will reduce the motion, excessive motion of the joint of the foot, decrease the number of steps or loading cycles per day and it will allow healing of the tissue, bridging of the wounds without the continual damage. As far as guidelines are considered, we have international working group of diabetic foot, which has issued guidelines in 2019 on what sort of footwear should be used. And according to this, in 2019, therapeutic footwear, and this has to be to protect the foot, instruct all the at-risk patients with diabetes not to walk barefoot in socks or in thin-soled standard slippers, whether at home or when outside. And secondly, do not prescribe and instruct a patient with diabetes not to use conventional or standard therapeutic shoe to heal a plantar foot ulcer. Footwear is only meant to prevent ulceration, the first ulcer or re-ulceration. They are not meant to treat an ulcer. Ulcer has to be treated by surgical or medical modalities as mentioned by my previous speaker. So they are just preventive and offloading in their nature. So what are the objectives of an ideal footwear? Even distribution of plantar pressure and relief of areas of excessive plantar pressure, shock absorption, reduction in friction and shear, 
limiting joint mobility, accommodation of deformities, the foot shoe air should be light, weight should be about 700 grams per pair, non-traumatic, aesthetically acceptable to the patient, and most importantly, cost effective. Parts of the footwear we all know, there is a last which is the mold over which a shoe is made, then the outsole which is the protective cover on the under surface of the shoe, rigid soles absorb the shock and reduce the vertical pressure, outsole should be tough to prevent injuries from sharp objects and the heel should not be more than 2.5 to 3 centimeters. The counter is the part of the shoe which is extending around the heel and uppers are which cover the upper part of the foot and they should have a soft lining, no threadings or knots inside which can cause the damage. Toe box is the most important part. A rounded and high toe box is essential to accommodate the dorsal deformities like claw foot and hammer toes. Insoles are giving the cushion to the foot and distribution of plantar pressure. They also act like a shock absorber and they are made of various tissues like microcellular rubber, plaster exhaust, silicon, etc. Shoe size is very important. The length of a shoe should, not, should be at least 1.25 centimeter or half an inch between the end of the shoe and the great toe. And the uh, socks are also very important. They are part of the footwear. Soft cotton socks reduce the shear stress and plantar pressure and seamless socks are preferred. This is a, a diagram, a simple diagram of how a shoe looks like and these are the parts of the shoe. And this I was mentioning the toe box should be at least 1.5 centimeter bigger than the conventional shoe. So it accommodates the deformities. There are recommendations by uh, various authorities on the ideal uh, diabetic footwear for various risk categories. This is very important. Risk category zero is majority of diabetic patients fall in this category. They have no history of foot problems and have no neuropathy. They can buy wear shoes available over the counter. But category one have loss of protective sensation without any deformity and they should wear soft cushioned sport shoes or preventive soft, uh, footwear, Hawaii sleepers, stilettos and narrow two boxes should be avoided. Risk category 2, these patients have loss of protective sensation as well as deformities and they should wear shoes with elastic uppers, shoes with an extra depth, high toe box and soft insoles. Risk category 3, these are the patients having history of ulcerations in the past, partial foot amputation, grossly abnormal uh, shape of the foot and they need customer molded shoes and insoles manufactured over individualized lasts. This is again the same uh, uh, classification, mild, moderate uh, and the severe category of and the similar footwear to be used. And these are some preventive footwear you can see here. These are aesthetically acceptable and they are made from fabric. And these are having a say a rocker bottom sole which has a thick uh, mid sole in the mid stance and it is offloading in the forefront. So these types are ideal footwear for uh, diabetic patients. Again, this is another footwear, which is leather actually, but it has a small rocker uh, foot bottom sole. And we have another footwear. Again, this is an ideal type of a footwear. We have the, the insole, outsole. This is a ideal sort of a footwear, which I cannot go into detail because of lack of time. This is the most popular sort of a uh, footwear known as the rocker bottom footwear. And this is the simple diagram. It is very thick in the mid stance. The outsole is very thick and there is an apex and there is a uh, offloading of the uh, forefoot. The mid stance is thick, you can see, and there is a fulcrum at the apex just behind the metatarsal heads on which the shoe literally rocks, shifting the pressure from hind foot to mid foot to the forefoot. And this is again a, a sample of rigid and semi rigid rocker footwear. These are actually the standard offloading modalities. If these are not being used, then we can use therapeutic footwear, extra depth shoes, custom made orthotics, prefabricated orthotics, molded insoles, rocker bottoms, plantar metatarsals, half shoes and customized footwears. This is again a front offloading shoe and these are insoles which have uh, which we can remove some part of the insole which is directly under the ulcer so that the healing plays there. And this is a, a heel offloading shoe where the heel part has been offloaded. And this is again a shoe uh, to accommodate the shark, uh, the deformities, hammer toes and uh, the claw toes. Here is a when, uh, study when I was searching for literature for newer innovations. This was very innovative Chinese study being done. Here they have used uh, wool, 
merino wool on the vamp on the top and there are three four insoles and there is a vibrating chip under the insole which will cause increase in the blood supply to the sole and there is a non-slip outsole so these beautiful things are being done and i think dr sanjay sharma is an innovator in himself and he is uh, making a lot of uh, new innovations in the footwear last few slides and this is the most standard thing which is going on nowadays the data driven custom made footwear that is cat cam which is computerized assisted design and manufacturing of the foot here we just on a pedogram or a podia scan we just take the planter measurements and see the peaks the peak planter pressure and make the insoles accordingly to reduce the planter pressures pedorthic care a pedorthist is a person who fits dispenses and helps in the manufacturing and modifying of the shoes and he helps the doctor to write a prescription and follow the prescription so there should be a foot wear prescription given by the patient uh, to the patient which has a complete diagnosis the desired effect of the uh, footwear on the foot and we unfortunately do not have pedorthists in our uh, setup and we need to uh, train lot of personnel in pedorthics and finally the patient has to wear the foot so he should know what he has to do with his footwear footwear sizes are not standard he has to look for a size range based on results of measuring new footwear should not be worn for longer time buy footwear preferably in the evening because the feet swell a little in the evening socks should always be worn to avoid blisters care of feet is mandatory even if the person is using a preventive footwear preventive footwear is effective to prevent the build up of callus footwear and insole should be periodically checked by the experts and check the footwear before putting them on for any foreign objects examine shoes feel inside the shoes for torn loose linings foreign objects and outsoles for embedded foreign objects cracks and wearing out so thank you so much and take care of your feet <coughs>